ride with Nima, all very excited about the rally. This cocktail party this evening kicks off our epic adventure. This fantastic event has been put on by the Club del Automobile Antiguo, the local Porsche Owners Club and the Lima Golf Club. We know it's going to be hard and we know that we've got a lot of miles to do ahead of us. signed up for picking to Paris and wanted to do Lima Cape Horn to get acquainted with long distance rallying. Yeah, looking forward to four weeks on the road. Uh, lots of challenges ahead. Well, I gotta go to the end of the earth. That's the best place that I could ever imagine driving a rally to. To see another continent like this, it's magnificent. I used to live in Buenos Aires many, many years back and uh, I wanted to do a rally through Argentina all my life and now I have a great opportunity to do this. Brendan and I met as a result of a car rally and neither of us had travelled the length and breadth of South America. So it was on our bucket list and this is the best way to do it. I think it's going to be an adventure of a lifetime. The desert, the Andes, Patagonia, it's incredible. All of it in one rally. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. I've done a lot of different types of rallying in the past. You know, stage rallying, rally raid, so this is just something different. We had some friends that were taking part of it and uh, at the end, with some wine, we became brave enough to, to join them. It's 9-11, uh, uh, 1972, uh, set up as a safari. It's set up uh, originally by Tatil and um, that's it. It's going to be amazing, all the journey, seeing these beautiful places and us getting to know each other in a different way and uh, that, should be, that should be the beauty of the whole trip. I'm the managing director of Net Hero, and uh, we are neutralizing the carbon footprint of the uh, Lima Cape Horn Rally. Climate change is a very serious issue and based on the emissions factor we can calculate the exact tonnage that it's uh, emitted into the atmosphere. We find credits from around the world from projects that are capturing carbon. We purchase them and then retire them on behalf of the motorist. We're so excited to see this part of the world. We've never been over here, so that's number one. Number two, finish safely, and number three, hopefully, in top three. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, and now it's really happening. Yeah, all very nervous. Well, I'm very nervous. Uh, a lot to think about, a lot of miles ahead of us. I think it's 11,500 to the end. Um, a really good group of people again, and um, it's a really good atmosphere. Exciting. <laughs> I must say, yeah, exciting. I think everything will be fine, actually. The route is perfect. I will tell you again after 31 days, our 30 days. The usual uh, butterflies in the stomach, not knowing where we're going exactly, and uh, uh, just looking forward to it. And we wanted to do something a little bit more exotic, uh, more challenging also from an endurance point of view. So. Yeah, a few years ago, before COVID, we decided to do this. And finally, we're here three years late, later. We can actually get to drive across South America. And we weren't. <laughs> uh, I used to travel in Latin America for a long time and haven't been back here in 
20, 30 years. I just thought it'd be a great trip going down through Latin America over the Andes, down to Cape Horn. Epic. It was good, it was good. Didn't uh, probably distinguish ourselves anywhere, but got here, which is always good. The track was good fun with the Volvo. It was a bit of a challenge, yeah. but good fun. We are competitive, but not that much. I'm driving with my son-in-law. It's for us the first experience, and I just love it. I think we're going up on, uh, into the mountains to the Andes, about 4,000 meters in like half a day, which we're gonna travel. So it's been quite challenging on the cars. I wonder how they will all behave and how the mechanics can help us maybe. And uh, for the rest, the body, of course. Um, we took some height pills, so uh, we'll see how it goes, but it will be a very tough day. We're just lowering the tire pressure because we are uh, now at almost 3,000 meters. So the, the tires are blowing themselves up because of the lower air pressure. So we let some steam off the tires. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from sea level, we're now at 2,200 uh, meters, which is a long way up. And the scenery is changing all the time, but it's just, it's just so big. It's everything's so massive and it's just amazing. Tarmac road all the way, bendy, twisty, and it's narrow, so we've got to be careful, but it's, it's a good road. Not you. Oh yeah, the mountains, great to look at, hard to drive up, and uh, I think I've been hanging onto the wheel by my fingertips all the way, but it's been a lot of fun. Epic, epic. It's been uh, tough roads, tough driving, altitude of course, we're at 12 and a half thousand feet right now. Car's running great, and uh, my driver is driving well, and we're here, yeah. Yeah. all good. The mountains were beautiful, it was really stunning views, very, very nice scenery, but the climbing was very, very hard. We started at sea level and had to go above 4,000 meters. We even reached 4,700 meters because you feel like in the fingers and the feet and yeah, the oxygen in your body is not the same as usual. But it was worth it because it's really beautiful over here. in the garage because apparently there is a strike in this town of Ayacucho and uh, we don't really know when we will be able to start so it might take a few hours still so we are in this uh, beautiful place and yeah just waiting well we're stuck here because uh, there seems to be some political unrest some some road blockages all major exit roads from this town are closed I think we will just have to wait and see how the situation clears out. All the roads are blocked out of the town, going out of the town, so we can't get out. So we're stuck. We don't know how long for. It could be another night here. Well, it's 3 a.m. in the morning and we are uh, preparing to exit the city and 
Uh, we've got a plan in place to convoy the cars, a very close convoy, about 15 kilometers out of town. Everyone's a little apprehensive, but uh, we're hoping we can get through it. We've been uh, barricaded here in Ayacucho for the last uh, 24 hours uh, because of a student strike, general strike. Um, they barricaded the roads in town and out of town. And I think in 10 minutes we will, everybody will follow each other and we will get out of uh, Ayacucho. I don't know where we are. We're, we're at the top of the world. It's daybreak. It's quarter past five in the morning. We've been, we left at 3.30. We left at 3.30. We now stopped. I'm guessing that the police are Negotiating. Having, a, Negotiating. having a powwow well, with, the, uh, with, with whoever's up there. The, students the, or the locals who put the rocks on the roads and yeah. who are on a 48 hour strike. So. But they call this an endurance rally. <coughs> this is. And I think this is an endurance <laughs> rally. I don't think anybody can argue that. No, no. no. So uh, we have police, security. They got out the guns about five minutes ago <laughs> and they went in the front together with uh, the era people. We're stuck here because they're negotiating. This is not our way out. This is negotiating. So I don't know what's going to happen. So we're trying our best to get up. Um, a little farm track which is probably around about a kilometer and if we can give each other a hundred meters start we should be able to get a running start and make it to the top well quite an exciting day escaping out of a city at 3 30 a.m. in the morning pretty dramatic um, protesters police Police in riot gear, uh, protesters with sticks and fire. It was um, it was an interesting morning to say the least. We were a bit concerned some of the other cars, the vintage cars, wouldn't make it, but we were going to try anyway, and we did. So it was like a hill climb, which was scary but quite funny at the same time. But uh, I think the adrenaline was so high that uh, we all fired up. But we got out and the majority of the cars are here now, but it was a really tough day. Wow, what a day yesterday. That's what the endurance rally is all about. I love it every moment of it. hugely demanding from from every angle. Part of it you expect the 12 hour drive, the 15 hour drive, etc. has all been the stuff of memories, shall we say. No, but it's been great and we're loving it. Ah, we're loving it. Amazing roads and great driving. When it comes to the car, we had a couple of uh, problems the first days with the fuel pump, but uh, the mechanics uh, fixed it and now we are very confident. So we have been uh, driving through amazing landscapes. Yesterday we also had the opportunity to go up to Machu Picchu, so we are really thankful to the organization because uh, through this rally we are experiencing completely new places.
going well. Tough day today and yesterday with long distance, but the car was running well. If we could proceed like this, we, we will arrive. We hope we will arrive. Um, probably the most adventurous one we've done out of all seven rallies we've done together. And today we begin off to Bolivia and we'll see how that adventure begins. It's a tough rally and as you can tell even talking at 4,000 plus meters uh, that looks a little bit tougher. We've had a few mechanical problems but we've been able to sort them out. Unfortunately it's put us a bit behind but we're having a good time. We're enjoying ourselves as long as the car holds together. That's always the key. <laughs> What happened to your navigator? He has a problem with his, his health in the, in the summer, but his doctor told him better to not go in this altitude. I try to do my, my best. I'm, uh, I do both. Till now, it's, it runs very good. I'm very happy. Bolivian border. Um, it seemed really well organized. Um, Melvin and his team are doing a great job and uh, we're just waiting to get through the treacle to get into, uh, into Bolivia. Our hope for today is that everybody has the right paperwork and we can just get through here as smoothly as possible and move on to Bolivia. We want to check serial number on the engine and the, the body and also check what we got in the luggage compartment. So, but they are nice people. We've got into La Paz, which was total madness, but I think it took us about two and a half hours, bumper to bumper, mirror to mirror, fighting for every inch to get through the city traffic until we got to the hotel and this morning we left at uh, seven uh, a beautiful morning drive out of La Paz and then the further on we went the better it got. The mountain scenery was the best we've seen so far on this trip. It was breathtaking every corner you every turn you take. Um, so beautiful. Coming here to Sucre was, was nice too. It's, you know, all cars are parked and we're having drinks and are getting ready for dinner. It's beautiful. Our car is 180 kilometers up the mountain, hopefully getting picked up by a tow truck tonight. We've been keeping her together for the last six days with a lot of hard work, but now we gotta like throw in the towel for a couple days and then rejoin the rally in Salta. Nobody's quite sure how the field's working. You're meant to have a four-digit code, nobody's got one. We've got all the import documentation, the customs documentation, but there's meant to be another document. Oh, that's my understanding anyway, so we'll find out. I think we've got uh, foul spark plugs. Engine started knocking and we pumped and pumped and pulled it till here, but the car finally gave out. So we got help on the way, should be here in about 20 minutes. We had a long climb to get up here, uh, wherever we are. The car is going well, it's been a challenge and it's fabulous weather, fabulous day, having a good time. Some people are questioning Bolivia, but I find it's nice. People seem to be good. I'm having a good time. I like it. I like Bolivia better than Peru. Yeah, I think out here it's beautiful. It reminds me of Tibet. So we're in Potosi in Bolivia, 
and Potosi is uh, known for its silver mines. Back in the 1800s in Spain, if you were at Potosi, that meant you were extremely wealthy. And last time I was here, there was about 300 miners and between them they shared one pneumatic drill so they each got it for one day every 12 months or so. Today's been really good, fabulous roads uh, through the mountains, lots of variety, lots of different types of uh, landscape, so yeah, it's been a great day. Well, we're back in Uyuni after uh, 12 years since our last visit and we decided to uh, drive out to the salt flats to recreate a photograph that we made uh, all those years ago. We had the wheels on the roof of that car, so we were sitting right up on the top of the car, and the photo looked great. It looked so good, it's been used in publicity. The dried up Salt Lake, uh, the mountains, it was just a magnificent drive. Very special, very special. A place that gets you. The road is amazing. The landscape, um, the skyline is incredible, very incredible. Amazing, today was fantastic. Perfect day, perfect distance, perfect roads, incredible scenes. It was, it was heaven. After this lovely day, we are on the South Lake. It's incredible. It feels like being in another world. So here we are in the middle of Bolivia. And the people couldn't be nicer. It's just so great out in the country when everybody just, all of a sudden, it's like a national holiday and everybody shows up to look at the cars. My Spanish is about as bad as everybody else's English around here. So it makes it kind of tough, but it's a lot of, a lot of fun. It's quite challenging, but beautiful. The geology and geography is just stunning. And the scenery here has just been unbelievable. You couldn't, you couldn't take a picture of it. It's just been amazing, amazing place. So it's been a wonderful day, fantastic scenery. We really look forward to go to Argentina. It's been a tough rally. You know, the Michelins hold up normally, but we just got to get to Salta with these tires and then we're going to try to change these tires. Argentina doesn't let you import tires, so we can't fly them in. So we're scavenging right now, trying to find tires. We're going to get them. We're going to keep going. morning we left Bolivia but in like two degrees, freezing, I think quite high up, like 2,800 or something. Came to the border, very quick border, really snappy and we're now in Argentina, very different countryside. The border crossing was pretty good, it took about three quarters of an hour or so uh, and here we are. how things are going so far. Now we're in Argentina, ready to discover this whole country since we'll be driving, I think, about 10,000 kilometers in here. 
So really excited for the next days to come. <laughs> what am I doing? Unsupervised mechanicking, as my wife calls it. Checking disc brakes, which turned out to be fine. Brother was here, just a bit of a check through the whole thing. Ready for what I get seven days till the next uh, rest day. I think we're gonna have some fun. Jeff and I are gonna compete here, but Jeff's Absolutely. got the advantage this morning. No, you're not over this guy. <laughs> He's a racer. Spa and uh, Le Mans. Uh, don't listen to him. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Tires all set, alignment done. Service done, oil changed, everything good to go. Bolts tightened, and we are gonna make it. All right. Get help yourself. Gelcho hat. We're in Argentina, so uh, we're honoring the country. As soon as we hit altitude, the car started playing up, and then we had the escape from Payacuchu. We got stuck halfway up the sandy hill, we got towed out of there, and the engine stopped. We just couldn't get it running properly again after that. So we had to have the car transported all the way from Peru to Argentina. The mechanics got to work on it and after a couple of hours they got it running. I'm a happy bunny now, yeah. <laughs> This is the fourth time this morning that we've had to stop. Overheating, I don't know how many miles we've come, but uh, yeah, we're cracking on for us. Uh, but it's, uh, it's keeping an eye on the temperature gauge all the time. I don't know, apparently a stone, something like this. And I love everything about it, the organization, the car, the scenery. I can't fault a single second, I'm just blown away. We actually think it was the best day of the rally so far because there was lots of dirt to play on and this car, us, are made for the dirt. <laughs> for <laughs> the dirt, we love the dirt. <laughs> and, especially um, the dust. Yeah, Beautiful. especially the dust, we love dust. <laughs> uh, we read somewhere that it was maybe 60-70% as hard as the uh, peaking to Paris that we've both done a few times and we reckon it's twice as hard. But that's what it's about. It's called an endurance rally, so um, you expect the people and the car to get worn out. That's what you're trying to do. We've just left Villa Carlos Paz, and uh, we've got up to two and a half thousand metres again. We have now nailed all the little niggly bits that we had problematic with the car. So we've got a couple of weeks of good competition now and we know what we're doing, we've sort of understood the game and we're ready to play. So uh, as the novices on the team, watch this space.
halfway through the rally, uh, just outside uh, San Luis, and uh, we, we've had some challenges along the way. Now in Argentina, fantastic weather. The great thing about South America is every day is different. Feels like we've done four rallies already. Um, cars are all being worked on in the backgrounds. All of a sudden, all the traumas of escaping towns, etc., etc., in Peru has turned into a proper rally now. It's just fun driving these high mountain roads, tight twisty corners, you know. It's grueling, it's very tiring, but it feels good at the end of the day. It's a real challenge to, to tackle these roads in these uh, difficult conditions, in these old cars. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's very rewarding um, to survive each day and to meet new people. An epic adventure and something that not very many people get to do. And it's just an awesome experience and well run and a hell of a lot of fun. son-in-law asked me whether I would join him and so we are doing it together and we are a good team you know he does the most of the driving and I do the navigating. We're um, in third place at the moment which we're really pleased with and the car seems to be reliable and going well. For us it's the journey um, although when we're doing well we tend to get a bit more enthusiastic about the competition. Philip did already some traveling in the south of America with a motorbike and he didn't take me along and I absolutely wanted to visit the south of America. I thought this was the best opportunity to come here, both of us, to do the same routes. Just enjoyed a fantastic lunch. I think the first during the rally where we really had time to enjoy the food, enjoy the wine. Now we're heading back to the hotel and having the uh, afternoon off. We are changing all four tires because we had to stop and to use our spare tire. And now we are lucky that we found a four set of new tires and we're gonna change them. <laughs> Early start this morning. A lot of miles, the car's going a little bit better. Um, had lots of help from the professors and the, the, the team of mechanics to, to get us where we are. So really grateful for that. We've turned into the petrol station and we've now got a plethora of children who are here to welcome us and it's fantastic to see. Nobody for miles, I saw one fox and now the world's arrived. Every stop we make, this seems to be like the magnet. I mean, those kids started, when they saw us, they were a block away. And they started running over here. It's like they let school out to come over and see these cars. It's just hysterical. <laughs> The people are the reason they come. They're good people, interesting people, get a great adventure, and uh, you know, go home happy. It's not about the competition for me, it's about the people. We're in the middle of Argentina at the moment, uh, going down into Patagonia and it's just very exciting to be here and it's a place not many people get the chance to visit. was just gorgeous. The roads were good, 
the river was just magic. It was, it was really lovely. We needed a few more of those moments. But we're out here, we're doing it, and it's great. It's great. The drive this morning through the National Park is absolutely amazing. We're having lots, lots of fun. We have been improving over time, so we're actually quite happy. This is what is described as a rest day, but as you can see around this car park, there's drills going, there's people underneath cars, in their engine compartments, and all over. So there's lots of work to do to keep the show on the road, which is what it's all about. It's getting to the end. Our clutch went when we were in Villa La Paz, and we shipped the car ahead, and we got here yesterday and put everything together. We got the engine out, put back the clutch. Within four hours, we were ready to run, and I went and met the rally halfway through yesterday. Yesterday, we went 30 kilometers the wrong way from the lake. But then we turned around, raced back, and we got into the correct time again. Whew. We've made one or two little navigational errors, but we've always been able to catch up and get to our timing points and you know, time controls on time. So fingers crossed, you know, we're in a Datsun, we're not in a Porsche, but we're hot on their tail. Yeah, the Mustang is a, is a comfortable car. I think uh, we, had, we had our share of small problems in the beginning, and now that the, they've been sorted, touch wood, the, the car's behaving well. It's not the fastest, let's say, on, on the gravel or on the small streets, but uh, it gets us places in comfort, so we're happy. It looks like we're in, uh, in the heart of Patagonia, in a place called Tribute. We've got a little train museum here, and. Uh, Lovely steam train. I don't think we can do a regularity on the train though, can we? Lovely barbecue has been laid on with uh, tables and place settings on the station platform. And over to our side here, a steam engine, would you believe it? Um, together with the uh, station platform itself. Um, most extraordinary place to be. To be honest, um, car failed us a little while back. And uh, since then, I'm afraid we're in a higher car, but still competing. Um, in the Patagonia challenge as it now is for the tail end of the journey. Patagonia Cup is kind of like a little reset so for all of us who've broken our cars and aren't you know in the lead or class leads um, we're able to compete with each other again um, as if it was you know a fresh uh, fresh little competition so uh, quite exciting. I'm lying second and I'm 19 seconds down on the first and it's tough. Everything's tough. Today is more like a connection drive, I think, for about 670 kilometers. And we're going from uh, uh, Esquel in, uh, in Argentina, a uh, city founded by the Welsh, by the way, into Chile. So we have a border crossing and I hope everything goes right. just past the Argentinian border now. We are in front of the Chile one. We had to wait quite a bit at the Argentinian side and I hope we're here on the Chile side goes a little bit quicker. Just left Argentina 
amazing last drive and um, off to another country which we've never been to so I'm looking forward to it. At the chilly side of the border it was my birthday and the um, man reading the passports and looking at it looked up and said happy birthday and it was quite a pleasure to have that happen. Oh the competition well we are looking at it from day to day we're still leading we don't have that much of uh, an advantage we try to do what we can do and Philip is really very very good on the test and then I try to do my best to give him the good instructions during the regularities not to lose too many seconds there. Today the route goes around the lake, about 400 kilometers of gravel, from what I understand. So it's 11 o'clock? Yeah. No, no, it's 12.38. The journey was just fantastic. It was so beautiful. The views were so stunning and every time so different. I couldn't stop taking pictures. So yeah, and then in the end we got another regularity, but then still after that, so many stunning views. It was really worth it to do all those roads in gravel today. It's been phenomenal. We uh, took a route which had a little less gravel and uh, the Bentley's kind of barely kind of keeping it together but did really well. Radiator didn't leak too much but we are here having a great party in the parking lot and ready for tomorrow. It's pretty tiring. It's uh, long days and uh, it's tough but uh, I think it's worthwhile. Definitely getting colder and it's very very different. This whole scenery feels very different. We've had problems, so we had to abandon the rally for a few days uh, to go and buy spares and then fix it up. But uh, now everything seems to be fine. We had such great support from everybody. All the competitors have been so good and so helpful. It's really sort of helped us to, to keep going and, and not give up. They're all very nice, and we've you know we've had a good time together, and uh, hopefully we'll keep in touch uh, <laughs> after the rally. Good last rig, and we I don't know, messed up something, so we're very much second. <laughs> Just gonna get the car to the end, that's the objective. Still kicking, we have to come another five days. Let's go. See you in Calafate. It's tough, roads are tough, people are getting tired, mistakes are being made. I'm not a mechanic, Shiv is a brilliant one. Every time something breaks, he's there and he fixes it. So I think we'll make it. I had doubts at the beginning, but now I believe in him. Mm. Took a little while. We're about 10 minutes behind. We've got the whole afternoon, hopefully, to catch up on the uh, MTC later, but it's tough. People are tiring, and uh, you can tell, but uh, wouldn't stop it for the world. Yet at the end, we take day by day. I think we have like four driving days to go, and uh, if if they're all gonna be like today, I'm not sure we will get there. But we we are nursing the car thanks to our own insights, the the mechanics' insights, and we'll take it day by day, as I said. And we we, we hope to be there uh, on Sunday. But first, we'll enjoy this town. Time for a party. We do things with style. Big hearts for big people. We're very close to finishing. Hopefully everything goes in the right direction. We've been with a broken car for the past 20 days, but I feel like the more kilometers we do, the better it goes. Classic cars are so much more rewarding than 
than modern cars. They've got a character and a, a sort of life as, of their own. Classic cars, you can just have a good poke around and hit it with a hammer, rattle a few spanners, and you can fix things. Modern cars are great, but there's no way I could, I'm not a good enough driver to even drive a Toyota Corolla to its limits but I can drive this to its limits, and it's just a feeling of exhilaration. Because I've done two Peking to Paris rallies, and as, as everybody has mentioned has done Peking to Paris, this seems more difficult. And I think the thing is, when we went through Mongolia, you know, the first 10 days were tough, but as we went west towards Europe, things got progressively better roads, nicer, easier, shorter days. This, it's been grueling from day one to day 30, so. It's just a different kind of a continent. There's not, not a lot of infrastructure here. So it, it definitely is the end of the world. <laughs>
now crossing the Strait of Magellan. I've been wanting to come here my whole life and see how it was. And now we're heading to Terra del Fuego for the last day and a half. Oh yeah! We are lying third right now, um, but very close to the, uh, the Porsche straight after us and also close to the Porsche just in front of us. So we have it all to play for this last couple of days. Standing or whether I'm actually just lying down, I am, um, I think, maybe second, but by one or two seconds. So I'm hanging on in there by a drawstring. So tomorrow will be the final day, tomorrow will tell. Fantastic experience 11,500 kilometers through South America, some of the most beautiful roads we've ever seen, fantastic scenery, great camaraderie. So, well, you couldn't have really asked for anything else. It was perfect. Oh, geez, a month of driving in uh, some of the greatest country I think I've ever seen. It was just absolutely bloody brilliant. What can I say? Epic. Excuse the French, but Epic. I mean... The route has been fantastic. I don't know who was responsible for the route, but it's that crazy. is yeah. really, really top, top. It was amazing. We really had so much fun. And I don't know how we're gonna go back to not sitting in the car every day and looking at tulips. Something that we'll remember for, for, for years to come. Great way to make friends. The camaraderie's been mega. And uh, lots of memories, beautiful scenery, enriches your life, so we love it. Thank you. A true endurance rally, no doubt about that. I personally would put it um, above P2P in terms of degree of hardness. Everybody was great, the competitors were great. We're very proud of our 1936 for making it here. We only lost like six seconds on the fastest car, so that's fantastic. And we made two zeros on the regularity, so I'm really proud of us. We are more happily together than ever before, <laughs> thanks to this amazing ERA Lima to Patagonia Rally. Yeah!